Okay, so the next steps are going to be to remove the two hard lines going into the master cylinder and then the two hard lines going to the bottom of the distribution block or junction block, I should say. And so a lot of people like to use a turkey baster for this, but turkey baster has a large um, inlet and so I find that it doesn't really hold the fluid very well. I like to use these cheap um, fluid pumps that you can buy. They're meant to screw on to like an oil bottle, a uh, quart size oil bottle. Um, you can get these for like 10 or 12 bucks on Amazon and basically I just stick it in there and pump it out, pump it out into a container, either this thing or this thing. So it ends up working really well. Um, so we're going to go ahead and do that right now. So very important when, when doing this job and any job with brake fluid is protect all your paint surfaces because um, brake fluid is very corrosive. So um, I have towels everywhere. Um, if you leave it on paint any, for any extended period of time, it's just going to destroy it. Um, so I have a bucket down here that I'm going to dump this in. I'm taking this out so I can get deeper down inside the reservoir and um, get as much fluid out as possible. Then I'm going to pump it into this Aquafina bottle I have and see now I can get this all the way deep down into here uh, with this pump because it's um, pretty compact. So I'll just as easy as this. And the master cylinder is divided, as you can see. So this pump is able to get clear on both sides. And I got, you know, like 90% of the fluid out. The rest of it's going to be down inside the master cylinder. Okay, to, to remove these two uh, 10 millimeters, it's recommended to use a flare nut wrench, which is means it's like almost enclosed. That way you can avoid stripping, stripping these, as opposed to just using a regular open-ended wrench. So I'm going to go ahead and use it to break it, break these loose. You can use open-ended to um, loosen them once it's broken loose. You see these are already kind of slightly rounded out from whoever was in here last because they probably didn't use a flare nut wrench. So it's kind of hard to get on. Break it loose like that. And you should be able to do it by hand or use a regular wrench. For me, I'm going to go ahead and replace my brake master cylinder, so I'm going to go ahead and also release these back two nuts um, so I can, once I get this off, I can just get this master cylinder out of the way. All right, quick note. Interestingly, this fell out. I, I see, I just tried to test fit the master cylinder and this fell out. This goes in here. And I was like, oh, I need to put it on the master cylinder. I'll just put it on the master cylinder instead of leaving it on the brake booster. And then I looked at it and I was like, hey, this looks almost like this one and then i was looking at it and it says mp side has some text on it and then i was like why is it so thick and i pulled it apart and there's two and they both look the same and i said hey this thing has text on it too what i think has happened is the master cylinder has been replaced two other times and both times well one other time before this one and the left the, on the first time I was replaced, they left this on. And then now when I took it off again, it stayed on the, the brake booster. And so I was about to have too, too many on there. So just keep that in mind in case you run into the same thing. Okay, here I have a brand new brake master cylinder. And what you need to do is bench bleed it. So I have the lines that I took off um, doing the ABS brake upgrade right now. Um, and so you got to keep in mind when you do this that the the rearward um, port is larger, so it has a special fitting right there. Uh, so I essentially have these fed into the top so I can loop it around and that's how you bench bleed it. And then I'm going to install it in the car like this and then just kind of do a quick swap like a Indiana Jones style and just um, swap it over to the um, ex to the upgraded lines and try not to lose as much fluid as possible and then I can bleed the system completely. So we're going to fill this up with brake fluid and then just pump the piston on the right and get it circulating.
Okay, so this is my setup for uh, bench bleeding the brake master cylinder. You gotta give it a bunch of really good pumps because there's obviously a bunch of air as I'm connecting these lines up. So a bunch of really good pumps in the beginning just to get the fluid out, the air bubbles out because if you just start doing slow pumps in the beginning, it's gonna push the air bubbles. Like, you know, if the air bubbles right here, it's gonna push it and then suck it back as, it, as you release the piston. So push it, suck it back, push it, suck it back. And so you gotta go bunch of pumps just to get all the, uh, force all the air bubbles out. And then you'll be able to um, not see any big air bubbles. Eventually you can push start pushing it slowly. Um, so there's been diff different couple couple different ways I've seen people bleed it. I've seen people kits that are exactly like this, and then other others where they're just pump it into a bucket um, and trying to just run fluid through it without recirculating it in, in the beginning, um, and then eventually filling it up. Um, so I'm not sure which is the best way, but this is the way I'm doing it. And so, you know, you're still gonna have to bleed your system anyway. Uh, once they get this in the car and all the lines sealed, um, installed, uh, I'm gonna do a full four corner bleed and uh, we'll get all the rest of the air bubbles out. All right guys, so I got my master cylinder installed and I just need to do, like I keep calling it, an Indiana Jones um, style thing where I just kind of do a quick swap. I'm gonna, I loosen, I broke these loose already, the ones on the master cylinder. And so I'm just going to quickly take it out. I don't think it's going to leak massively, um, but it's, it'll probably leak a little bit. And I might have to release both at the same time because seeing as how these are intertwined, um, they might get in the way. Like once I release this one, install this one, it's going to be pushing up against this one here. And I'm going to need to get this one out before I can install this one. So I hope that makes sense. Um, anyway, I'm going to try it right now and then I'll uh, let you guys see how it goes. Also, you'll want to have a bunch of paper towels handy and some rags. Again, just make sure you don't get any break fluid on any of your painted surfaces. And then holding a paper towel actually helps um, get grip on the slippery stuff too. That's what I find, especially when you're trying to do things in a hurry. This one, as you can see, fluid didn't come splurging out or anything like that. Okay, see, so this one is kind of in the way. So this didn't really work out as good as I had hoped. Lucky the holders are flexible. No painted surfaces underneath the master cylinder, which is good, but I'm just putting a paper towel there just in case. Again, use paper towel to help you thread it in and so you don't keep slipping. I'm gonna just tighten this one in since it's leaking. Again, these ratcheting uh, flare nut wrenches. So clutch. Can you imagine doing that little by little? regular wrench. Okay. One was a little bit of a struggle getting in, but in the end, it all worked out. Just hate dealing with all this fluid everywhere. Okay, now grab your burnout wrench and give them all a snug. 